Good evening, everybody. Today, spring, and to our Facebook uh, family, we certainly want to welcome you to our Bible study this evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Marie Herring, uh, the senior pastor of Day Spring Missionary Baptist Church, where everybody is somebody, and Christ is truly all. And before we get into our Bible study, I just want us as a um, a church family and, and those of you who are in, in Facebook land, we'd like to invite you to do the same, is to pray for uh, the Mickle family. Judge Stephen Mickle passed away, and so we are praying for his family. Also, uh, Marion Magruder family from Hawthorne, her daughter, uh, Farrah, passed away. We ask that you um, pray for Doris Swinton. Uh, there are a couple of people in her family. Uh, that have passed away, and um, um, Brother John, who is uh, Daisy Johnson's brother, uh, his daughter passed away. So please keep them in your care, uh, in your prayers, rather, because earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Amen. Also, uh, if you are 65 and older, uh, and you want to sign up for the vaccine, please uh, stay on the lookout <clears throat> for uh, messages that are coming from me via the GroupMe uh, app or uh, text messages, uh, and I, I would need your information. So, you know, call me if you need me. Uh, also, uh, make sure you sign up at the health department if you don't, you know, get a chance to go through us. Uh, I know that they, they are... Um, given the vaccine. And so this is for those of you who feel comfortable enough to take it. I've taken mine. I'm ready for my second dose, and my husband has done the same. <clears throat> so just, just wanted to um, continue to uh, announce this. Uh, also, um, our Deaconess Evelyn Fox is going in the hospital on Monday, and we're sending up prayers, healing prayers for her and also uh, Sister Wynette Dunbar, who will um, go into the hospital, uh, I think it's March 9th. So there's a lot to, to continue to pray for, pray for our government, of course, that the Lord would lead and guide our new president and his cabinet, and uh, that there will be peace on earth. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for another night that you are allowing us to uh, teach a Bible lesson. We thank you, God, that those who are listening, when, when they hear the word, God, they will become doers of the word. Help us to strengthen our prayer life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we've been doing a little series uh, <clears throat> separate from the 12 steps, uh, walking the 12 steps with Jesus Christ. And so we started talking about prayer in that 10th step. So we've been doing a, a mini-series uh, on prayer, and we call it This Means War. And of course, we have done uh, six strategies of prayer, <clears throat> and uh, they are strategy number one is how do you get your passion back? Strategy uh, number two is uh, how do you get your focus? Because these are the things that you would need in order to be an effective prayer. Um, and then uh, strategy number three, how do you get your identity back? Number four, your family. Number five, your past. Number six, your fears. Amen. And so tonight we're doing number seven, and we're not going to review all of those, but we're do <clears throat> doing number seven on uh, your purity. Uh, your purity uh, represents uh, staying strong in your most susceptible places. You know, how do you hang on to your purity and not minimize it to the point where you think it doesn't really matter? So I usually start these out with, if I were your enemy. So I'm going to do that with this one, strategy, strategy number seven. And our scripture is taken from Galatians 5 and 16 where it says, walk in the spirit and you will not uh, desire the lust of the flesh. Walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the lust 
of the flesh. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason I'm looking like this because I have some different glasses on tonight and and I can't, they're progressives and I can't see. But anyway, so if I were your enemy, uh, I'd tempt to, I'd tempt you towards certain sins, um, making you believe that they're basically unavoidable, you know, biological. Like some guys say, well, you know, my daddy uh, used to drink and my granddaddy used to drink. So therefore, you know, I'm, I, I, that's why I drink. Okay, uh, so the enemy will, will want you to think that those sins are unavoidable. Uh, if I were your enemy, I'd study your tendencies and your proclivities, uh, proclivities are your weaknesses. I'd study those till I learned the precise conditions that would make you uh, the most likely to indulge in them. So if you know, if I know that there is a proclivity to, to drink or to uh, smoke reef or, or to do drugs. If there, I, I've stopped doing it, but if there's a proclivity to do it, uh, the enemy is studying those times that, that it seems like I just can't help myself. So it's, let, pre, pretend he has a book and he's writing things down about what you did when this happened. When you got upset, how did you handle it? Well, you know, did you go to drugs? Did you go to alcohol? Did you did you become abusive? Just how did you handle it? So, the, because the enemy we've learned is very strategic. And uh, if I were your enemy, I, I'd strike right there. Again and again. Whenever I find out what causes you to tick, I'd strike right there. And I'd do it over and over again until I wear you down. And because if I can't separate you from God forever, uh, I can at least set you at odds with God for the time being. So that's the way the enemy thinks about us, okay? Um, so as we get into our lesson, uh, don't touch that. Hmm. You don't know where it's been. How often have we told our children that? Don't you touch that. You don't know where that's been. Don't put that in your mouth. You don't know where that's been. And, and, and guys, I know I'm not your, your mama, okay? But I do think of you as a friend. And when it comes to the enemy's specific, strategic, most enticing temptations against you and against your purity, when it comes to that, uh, we need to be very, very careful. And I hope you'll imagine me as uh, a blur coming up fast in your peripheral vision, calling out to you with an urgent voice, both arms waving wildly saying, don't you touch it. Don't you go there. There's a red flag there with him. Don't you do that. Hallelujah. Because both of us know exactly where that particular thing has been. All right? Uh, that enticing temptation that tickles your curiosity, you know, piques your interest and placates your personal proclivities, has been festering in the devil's sick, sinister mind all morning or all, all uh, month, or all year in some cases. He's been studying you just that strategically. Uh, just sitting there, you know, soaking up vileness and, and filth, uh, cruelty and conspiracy. You know, he's waiting on the right time, the right moment when you are most weakened and susceptible to attack. Lord have mercy. So remember now, he's taking notes on you. So he knows what makes you tick. Hallelujah. He knows when you become uh, most vulnerable. Okay? But once he's cleaned it up for presentation, uh, sliding it into view, uh, you think it was the shiniest, most desirable bit of 
uh, unclaimed satisfaction you've ever seen. Oh, he can make it look so good. He can dress it up and make it smell real good. He sets it out there where your eyes can't help but be drawn toward it. At least you know uh, to pick it up and, and to look at it and to feel it and to play with it because that's how sin starts. That's how the temptation starts. You know, it ain't going to hurt to look at it. It's not going to hurt to pick it up and, and feel it. It's not going to hurt to play with it a little bit. You know, the moral compromise, uh, the unhealthy habit, the enticing addiction. Y'all hear me today. The allure towards sexual impurity. Do you think their ability to show up when you happen to be exhausted or hungry or lonely is just coincidence? You know, you and your boyfriend or you and your husband could have just broken up, just had a terrible fight. And so at that particular time, you are most vulnerable. And then someone comes along and says all the right things that you wanted him to say. Do y'all hear me today? Do you t detect some kind of, uh, some design at work in the timing, uh, in the placement, uh, in the package? Do you detect that something is, is that, that somebody is up to something at the time? Or they said just the right thing at the right time? Or they took you to the right place at the right, do you think that's by accident? Lord have mercy. Look at what we know from Satan's temptation of Christ in Matthew chapter 4. Uh, the devil came out into the wilderness where Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. And by the way, we're, we're fasting also. We're doing the Daniel fast, partial fast. Sorry about that. But I forgot to put that in our announcements. But I'm hoping that you saw it on your calendar and uh, the fast started on Sunday. Amen. But the devil came out in, uh, into the wilderness where Jesus had uh, been fasting for 40 days in Matthew chapter 4. And it was a time, physically speaking, that the Lord was hungry. Remember now, he was man. He was all man and he was all God. So his humanity allowed him to get hungry. Uh, he was alone out there in the wilderness. He was tired. He was depleted. Can't you, can't you see him? Hallelujah. What better set up and situation to make the suggestion of, well, bread. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you slide me a warm roll in my direction, topped with some honey butter, I'm a gonna. Hallelujah. We are now on a fast and, 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 and you don't want to... You don't want to tempt God. Hallelujah. You don't want to go into a place where you know you are going to be vulnerable in that place and will cause you to get off your fast. Amen. But even when, when I'm not hungry, glory to God, if you put some bread, take some warm rolls and, and put butter on it, I'm going to want to eat it even if I'm, if I'm not hungry. But, but, but that's the enemy's way. Uh, precision and uh, personalization and persistence. He doesn't stop. Glory to God. I wish we were as strategic about him as he is about us. Lord have mercy. He's always scouting for what Luke's gospel describes as the opportune time. That's in Luke chapter 4 verse 13. The opportune time, you know, the moment when a well-placed temptation is most likely to be its most irresistible. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. So again, I ask the devil's temptations, the ones he picks out and personalizes for you. You think that's a coincidence? You think that's uh, by happenstance? You think that's calculated? 
hallelujah, uh, uncalculated? Of course it's not. It's not by accident. He knows you better than you know yourself. So stop and see what happens, day spring. Stop at the place where you first recognize the scent of temptation in the air. Uh, you know, stop at the place where you first realize, uh-oh. You know, stop at the place where you first uh, uh, get a smell of that roll that you're not supposed to be eating. Stop at the place where you realize that uh, that young man, you know, I don't need to be around him too often. Hallelujah. Stop at the place before you get there. Y'all better hear me today. And before you touch it, remember. Remember where it's been. Uh-oh. Remember where it came from. Remember who's behind it. And if it's one of those repeat temptations uh, that you've been battling against for years, remember the places it's taken you. Remember the places it's always it always ends up ends up taking you. Because as soon as you say yes to that, you're headed there again, and you know it. You know, if there's a, a, a young man or a young woman that I know that uh, brings out the worst in me. Did y'all hear what I say? Brings out the worst in me, meaning it, it, uh, when, when I'm around that particular person, I do things that I wouldn't normally do. Um, I, I participate in activities that I wouldn't normally participate in. Y'all hear me today. And, and, and you know it. You, you know that you don't need to be around that particular person. You know that person brings out the worst than you. You know that person doesn't mean you any good. Y'all better hear me today. The kind of prayer strategy, uh, Day Spring, that we're, we're about to employ uh, treats every temptation as the potent, life-threatening uh, stick of dynamite that it is. Everybody can't handle temptation. Hallelujah. Jesus did. Hallelujah. So you don't put yourself in a position. You don't, if you are uh, uh, an ex-alcoholic, don't take yourself into ABC liquor bar. Okay? Uh, if you are an ex-womanizer, uh, um, you know, then stay from around, uh, stay from places that can put you back into that same situation again. Do y'all hear me? Despite how inviting that it might seem, despite how natural it feels, despite how much simpler the rest of your day would seem to go if you just gave in and went along with it, temptations are never harmless. Y'all better hear me today. We, the enemy wants you to think that it's, it, it, it does not matter, that you can handle it. Glory to God. And you know you've just come off of an addiction. Why would you test God? Why would you put yourself in a situation that could put you back into that addictive state? Uh, the consequences, y'all, are never minimal, glory to God. And the waves of, waves of your choice will ripple out, outward into your heart, mind, soul, and body. Possibly even so to, to your future generations. So what am I saying? What you are about to do, glory to God, can affect you, your heart, your mind, your soul, and your body, or even into the next generation. The enemy told you that it, 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 it was such a small feat, that it was such a, a, a small thing, that it would not affect your, uh, your, your life in terms of your previous addictive state. Glory to God. But the enemy is a liar. He doesn't like you. He doesn't love you. Matter of fact, he wants, he wants to destroy you. Glory to God. And he will do anything, use anybody 
to get to accomplish that particular uh, feat. Y'all, sin has consequences. Did you hear what I say? Sin has consequences. Doesn't matter how small you think it might be. Always has and always will have consequences. Keep this revelation fixed uh, squarely in your mind. That sin always has con con consequences. Because whether we like it or not, uh, day spring. Here's how the spiritual economy of life works for believers. Listen to this. Obedience to God will always bring about intimacy and nearness to him. Obedience to God will bring about divine blessings and favor. Always. Say always. But watch this, disobedience to God creates a sense of distance and loss. When we disobeyed our parents, we certainly didn't want to be around them. Well, it's the same way with God. When we disobey him, it brings a sense of distance and loss. You feel like you don't lost something. It also brings grief and regret. Baby, when you disobey God, you're going to regret it somewhere down the line, if not immediately. But no matter how immediately noticeable the cost, the ripple effects of sin always affect your connection with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Uh, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, are y'all with me? So whenever we have sin in our life, God can't dwell there. Glory to God. And this is exactly what the enemy is hoping for. It's why he's so personalized and meticulous in his advances to tempt you. He's trying to get you in a trap, baby. Glory to God. But you, you are too wise to fall for those traps. You are too wise to fall for those guys who just want your money, who just want your body. You're too wise to fall for those women, uh, men, who, who just want your money. Lord, have mercy. You're too wise for that. God has raised up mature Christians. Glory to God. So, so impurity weakens your praying, Lord have mercy, which in turn weakens your power. So if you got a weak prayer life, then you're going to have, your power is going to become weakened by that weak prayer life. Y'all hear me? And, and the energy that we expect our prayers to access and to generate is momentarily choked off and shorted out. Hallelujah. So, so, so sin will short out your power source. Glory to God. Sin will uh, uh, choke off your power source. Uh, we've compromised the system when we allow sin to come in. We compromise the system when we say, oh, I'm just going to do this little bit right here, and it ain't going to bother, you know, it ain't going to hurt nobody. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We've created a bottleneck. We are leaking oil. We are leaking our power. We are leaking the oil of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. When we allow sin to set in. Glory to God. Uh, we end up in, in practical terms living like the double-minded man in, New, in the New Testament book of James, who the Bible says should not expect to receive anything from the Lord because he's unstable in all of his ways. So don't be double-minded. Glory to God. 
because the Bible says you're, you're going to be unstable. Hallelujah. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Stop uh, not being able to make a decision. Make a decision and stick to it. Be prayerful. Always talking to God. And then when you get ready to make that decision, you'll feel good about it. There will be a, a peace about that decision that you've made. Amen. The devil's strategy is to make us believe impurity is, well, normal. Hallelujah. A little sin ain't never hurt nobody. A little sex ain't never hurt nobody. A little drink never hurt nobody. I ain't going to drink the whole bottle. That nobody hurts if we uh, keep a, a few forbidden things on hand and enjoy them from time. You know, I can, I can keep me a little liquor in the, in the cabinet, you know, and take me a little swig. Every now and then, ain't going to hurt nobody. Oh, I can get me a little puff off of some reefer and ain't nobody going to know it. You know, put on some perfume and they can't smell it. Hallelujah. Ain't going to hurt nobody. Glory to God. It ain't no big deal. <laughs> Purity leads us to fervent prayer. And fervent prayer leads us to purity. So what I want you to do is grab a pencil and some paper, paper and get comfortable and write these things down. Uh, I want you to write these scriptures down that I give you because these are the scriptures that you're going to incorporate in your prayers uh, so that you will always be mindful of the purity Hallelujah, that you're supposed to be keeping. Amen. Um, you're struck. And also, when you get your pencil and your paper, write down your struggles. Write down your proclivities. Write down the things that are weak, uh, cause you to be weak-minded. Write down the things that will cause you to be vulnerable. Write down the things that that uh, the enemy can take and use against you. Y'all better hear me today. Uh, and name them specifically and individually. Don't just say, oh, uh, I just have some weakness. No, what are your weakness? weaknesses? Write them down. Be specific. Because when the enemy was studying you, he was very specific. That's why he knows your vulnerability. He knows your proclivities. He knows your weaknesses because he studied you. So now don't be so lackadaisical about uh, getting him. Y'all better hear me today. So call him out from hiding. Call out those things that you know are weaknesses to you. I don't know what they are to you. I know what mine are. But you only you know who what yours are. So call them out loud. Write them down. Unmask those weaknesses and make them show their faces. Hallelujah. Because when you come to scriptures, to the scriptures that I'm going to share with you, you're going to find some phrases of truth in there that uh, while you probably know them, Perhaps you haven't been praying them in connection with specific areas of temptation in your life. Y'all better hear me today. Scriptures that authorize you to throw off the chains of slavery to sin and put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. That's just living right. That's just right living. And find the phrases that speak to your heart most clearly in connection with the specific issues that you're struggling with. 
Y'all better do this. This is for you, baby. Hallelujah. And and won't nobody know you did it but you. But if you don't want to be helped, then that's you. You don't have to write a thing down. And then use them as part of your customized prayer strategies. Hallelujah. You know, if you listen to our uh, intercessory prayer leaders, they are learning to pray the scriptures. And baby, it is so powerful. Hallelujah. I see Angie Terrell on the line. She knows what I'm talking about. Daisy Johnson is also on the line, the prayer line. Hallelujah. They know what, what we're talking about. When you pray the scriptures, then it brings about a change in you. Hallelujah. Because there's no way you can pray the word and not be changed by the word. So one of the scriptures you may want to incorporate is Romans 8 verses 1 and 2. It says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Lord have mercy. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. You don't have to keep condemning yourself. Hallelujah. For the things that you have done in your past. Because Jesus takes those things. He forgives you for them. He casts them into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. And, and I'm reading um, from uh, a different translation. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin. Y'all better hear this. And live to righteousness. For by his wounds... You were healed, baby, for you were continually staying, straying like sheep. But now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Glory to God. Amen. And Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 14. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts and do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. Y'all better hear this, but present yourself to God as those alive from the dead and your members are instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not be master over you. For you are not under the law, but you're under grace. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you, watch this, to be tempted beyond what you're able, which means that every temptation you, you, you have, there is a way to get out of it. Glory to God. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also <laughs> so that you will be able to endure it. You have the power to say no to sin. You have the power to say no to drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever the proclivity might be, you have the power to say no because he does not give, he doesn't allow you to be tempted above that which you are not able to say no to. Uh, then Ephesians chapter 6, and these are uh, scriptures now that you can incorporate in your strategic prayers uh, against uh, uh, the enemy when he tries to get you to, uh, to succumb to your impurities, succumb to your proclivities, succumb 
to your weaknesses. Okay, Ephesians 6, 14 says, Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness. Glory to God. And our last one, uh, in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32, says, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Ah, oh, hallelujah. He's talking to Peter. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. The word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand, a virtual hand of praise? Glory to God. Amen. And so tonight, um, you know, we've been talking about purity, staying strong in your most vulnerable places. Hallelujah. We pray that we have said something to get you through the week and to help you with your proclivities, your weaknesses uh, that are going. And remember, don't nobody know this, but you, you and God. So, so this whole, uh, this whole strategy thing is between you and God. Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to do is teach you how to pray the scripture towards those things where you're having trouble. Hallelujah. And so, uh, and you can pick from the ones I've, I've um, read or you can find your own. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you, God, for this word on strategy number seven, which is talking about our purity. That is staying strong in our most vulnerable places, S staying strong in our most susceptible places. Staying strong when we're feeling so weak that we don't feel like we're able to make it. Oh God, we thank you for your strength. For you have given us more grace to get through whatever we need to get through. Nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. And if, if nothing is too hard for God and you have the Lord, of, Lord Jesus Christ on the inside of you, then there's nothing that you face that's too hard for you. I suggest you turn it over to Jesus because he'll make everything all right. Cast your cares uh, down at the foot of the cross. Cast your cares upon him for he careth for you. And Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you, God, that those who are listening can take this word and use it as as one of our members say, uh, chew it up and spit it out and live it out in the name of Jesus. And God, we just thank and praise you that if there are any who have not received you as their personal savior, Roman 10 and 9 says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And we thank you, Lord, for saving us today. Hallelujah. And we will see you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Don't forget your Daniel fast. We're Daniel fast. Uh, it's a partial Daniel fast of no meat, no dessert, and no strong drink. But we know we don't have to worry about the strong drink with you. Amen. Amen. So we thank you for joining us. I see Johnny L. Mann is on the line. Sabrina Phillips. Um, Ashley Davis is on the line. So good to see you, Ashley. And we thank you guys for spending this time with us. May the Lord bless and keep you is our prayer. Amen.